Yeah, you and I did work there. You absolutely left on good terms. I left on terms. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I left on good terms. Let's call it good terms. No, I didn't. Yeah. Good terms. Do you have the time to listen to us whine on episode number 75 of the Promo Front Podcast? I hope so, because I'm one of your hosts, Bill Petrie. With me, as always, the head honcho of the holidays. You know, wait, wait a minute. I, no, let's just call him Grandpa. The <laughs> one and only Kirby Hossaman, who just in the last week became a grandfather of a beautiful baby boy, Quincy. Kirby, congratulations to you, Skylar, your entire family, Keith. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, it really is. It's a, it, very, very exciting. And uh, everybody's healthy, which is, you know, sort of the number one thing. Well, sure. Um, it's, uh, it's funny because, you know, 20 some years ago when I ha had Skylar, social media wasn't a thing. Cell phones weren't a thing. So um, it was, but COVID has kind of put you back in that box, to be honest with yeah. you, because uh, you couldn't go and visit, which honestly, for me, perfect. I could work. I wouldn't stress all day. And right. then I just got the text that said, he's here and everyone's good. And uh, right. that kind of lightened up my, my life a little bit. And so I'm doing, doing great, man. Awesome. How are things with you? Doing great. Uh, kids are wrapping up their semesters, their first semester at college. I call it the survival semester because it's such yeah. a yeah. transition uh, from, you know, the, the, the nurturing bosom of the home front to, Hey, I got to deal with some real life stuff. So they'll be coming home actually today as we're recording this for the next uh, five weeks. I'm sure. Uh, I, I know I'm, ex I am super excited to see them. I am sure by Saturday, I'll be ready for them to leave. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's the way that works. <laughs> you know something I'm never ready to have leave. What's that bill? Certainly not our industry. I never want the amp email in social service to ever leave industry. Right. those good people those good people at promo pulse you know we we have we, we keep talking about we're getting close to dribbling out the clock of 2021 um and our friends over at promo pulse and amplify they want to help amplify your sales as yeah. you get out of 2021 and get into 2022 now we all know how important it is to stay top of mind with your clients but you know, a lot of times, Kirby, that's really easier said than done, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it sure is. And they, yeah. they do, they make it easy. They do. They have that uh, solution for you. Promo Pulse does because they've launched a social component to augment their already amazing AMP email service. Now, the AMP email service sends 20 fresh branded products directly to your clients every week. But now distributors can add and amplify their uh, exposure, their, their, their reach by uh, posting beautiful content directly to their social media accounts, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, up to twice a week. Kirby, this is the power of consistency. It's something, you know, I live and mm -hmm. breathe and preach on a daily basis. What say you? Well, again, I think you're right. I think consistency is the key. Branding is the key. And the idea that you are going across platforms, reaching your customers where they are and delivering that consistent message is, and, and, and I think what's really, as I kind of alluded to making it easy, it happens when you're not thinking about it. And I think the, right. like the, I think the reason people don't do it consistently is A, they haven't come up with the content. Well, that's solved with this, right? And right. B, it's just, it's hard to stay on top of it. Well, that's solved mm -hmm. with this. And so, yep. yeah, Jason and, and that gang over there at Promo Pulse have really made it easy to stay top of mind with your customers. They really have. And the best part, you could try AMP today in the first 30 days. You know how much they cost you? Nothing. That's right. It's free. <laughs> Dramatic pause there. Like, Dramatic <laughs> pause <laughs> at all. It costs you nothing. There's no better Christmas gift to give to yourself or your business than that. Head over to promopulse.io slash amp to get more information. Tell them your friends at Promo Front sent you and you won't be sorry you did. It really is 
yeah. uh, truthfully, a no-brainer. Now, Kirby, uh, we are winding down our year. We just talked about that on the Promo Front podcast. You have the upfront section today. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Um, I'm excited about the game I've got in the party in the back. Ooh, so a little okay. teaser there. Yeah. Um, little holiday theme there. But uh, you have the upfront section. What, what are we going to talk about in the world of promotion of products today, Kirby? So honestly, I, I have a ton of topics, but I struggled a little bit in the promo world. So, uh, but one of the things I was thinking about is uh, content in the promo world. So okay. podcasts over the last couple of years, really, even before the pandemic, had mm -hmm. really started to explode, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so podcasting, whether it was video podcasting or just the traditional uh, listen on the go podcasting has really just taken off. Oh, sure. And, and while there's there are some great podcasts in the industry i don't feel and I, and this is where i want you to correct me if i'm wrong and i know you love that yeah. um I do. it's <laughs> i don't feel like it's taken off as much in the industry as it has across other platforms and so what i wanted to do was kind of talk through some of the industry podcasts that i knew and really liked mm -hmm. give those shout outs see which ones you liked and then okay. really give the audience an opportunity to tell, like, correct me where I'm wrong on this. So, um, hey, and, what and are there's no better time to do this if I can interrupt? There's no better time to do this because we're all kind of trying to wind down our years. Yeah. And we usually, one of the great things about the promotional products industry is it kind of does really nice to have a nice lull uh, between Christmas and New Year's. So, it's a great time to pick up some of these podcasts. Yeah. So, go ahead and yeah. fire yeah. away, Kirby. Yeah. So, I've got a couple here that are just kind of my go tos, but then, yep. like, let's, let's kind of Go back and forth about ones, and I know I'm totally mm -hmm. putting you on the spot, so I apologize yep. for that. Um, but I'll give you the, the the most obvious one first for me is uh, Skewcast. Common Skews podcast is num mm -hmm. like that's number one. It's one on my mm -hmm. subscription list that I listen to all the time. Bobby, mm -hmm. uh, I think sort of Bobby Leahy is the is the driver of that, but certainly um, uh, Mark Mark Graham jumps on there as well, and they, mm -hmm. they just do a great job on that one, and that's one that I always listen to. Yep, no question. Uh, I think Skewcast. Um, they, they really have found a niche that they serve mm -hmm. um, and they serve it well. And mm -hmm. it is not a salesy podcast no. in terms of buy something from Common Skew. I think it, what it does is really emulate the values of Common Skew in the spirit of helping the community at large be better. Yeah, I love it. Um, let's see. One of the other ones that pops into my head. And I, so when I say industry podcast, I mean, uh, podcasts that are done by people in the industry. Yeah. Um, so not necessarily specifically talking about imprinted pens. Yeah. Um, but one of the ones is Brand Builders. Uh, our buddy mm -hmm. Brian Young uh, has been doing it. Um, That'd be on my list. Yeah. So, and he does a great job. And one of the things that I think he's done a good job of, if you're in the industry and you're thinking about doing a podcast, is yeah. he has centered his whole thing. He, his art is directed. Mm -hmm. It's good for anybody, but it's certainly directed to his end user. And mm -hmm. um, he uh, invites people from around his area. So he suddenly becomes a media company within his oh, yeah. city. And they they do that great. Yeah, uh, but he has done a great job. Uh, and, and it's been really cool to watch him because we've known him. Uh, since he was aspiring to start a podcast. Yes, and that's right. He, he, I don't know if he's really right in doing this, but he always attributes you and me as being an inspiration <laughs> for that, which I don't, I know. Yeah. He has done something that uh, you and I have not done. And he's really created um, something very special and very, like you said, in the, a, a community specific. Yep. And uh, to watch that podcast grow from idea to execution to award winning uh, yeah. has been really fantastic. It's a yeah, great absolutely. podcast. Brand builders. Absolutely. Cool. I, and I've got a couple more I can just run through really sure. quick. And, and, and then I'll shut up then. You, no, and that's fine. But jump in if, about any of the ones I forgot. Yep. So yeah. our buddy Roger Burnett does So You're, so you're in Sales. That's one I listen to on the regular. Um, the one that is, it, when it comes out, I would say it, it isn't like a weekly or a monthly one, but Charity did the, the Badass Women of Promo. I generally enjoy that one. Um, promo Kitchen. They're one of the OGs. Mm -hmm. um, and it, mm -hmm. that one has, um, I think, changed voices in a, in a good way. Like Mark, mm -hmm. I think was, Mark Graham was the person all the time who yep. was doing it. And they've got Joe, uh, Joanna Gottlieb and uh, Kate Plummer and some other folks that are the voices on there. And that's great. And um, then I have another one here written that I can't read. Oh, the rundown. Uh, rundown okay. with um, Amelia uh, Model and Lori. Um, so I'll forget her Lori last. Bolton. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the ones I had on my list. So I don't know if there's, and honestly, that's why I'm asking, because I know there's probably other ones yeah. out there that yeah. I can't think of. And whether you can think of them, I want to ask the audience to, to help. 
Yeah, I think it'd be great if the audience chimed in. I mean, I, yeah. I could echo a lot of what you said. I think a lot of what you said is very accurate. You know, I I, I, I loved uh, one thing I'll, I'll add, you know, to, you yeah. know, Rogers Gray and all that stuff. Um, but the the ch one charity does the baddest one promo. I really wish she'd be more consistent with that. And that's not criticizing charity. I yeah. think there's just an appetite for it. But I also know she's got like 15 jobs. Yeah, she's, and she's, sure. she, she is the busiest woman in promo. And that's not a pejorative. So yeah. I understand that it's not a, a priority. Well, and what I would say is, and I think that the, the way to look that through the compliment is I think charity has a lot to say. And I think she does a Absolutely. good job of lifting people up. So the reason you want more of it, you want more of anything you like a lot. So Absolutely. And I look forward to people pulling that part out, sending it to charity and having them get <laughs> mad at me because that wasn't the impact. That wasn't the point of it, but that, that will happen. Yeah. Um, the one I'd add to your list, if I could say, um, is a Soapbox. I think Soapbox oh, has yes. a really cool podcast out. Um, it's hosted by Brett Schaefer and Dan Piggott, uh, Soapbox Marketing Communication, and they really highlight suppliers. And yeah. it's, again, not a salesy thing, but they do some really good deep dive conversations. They're pretty consumable. About 20 minutes comes out every other week. It's a really great podcast. And yeah. they uh, they mix kind of the, the the business and fun. And so I really like that one. That, I'm so, see, this is exactly why I wanted to have yeah. the conversation because I knew people will bring some up and I'll be like, oh yeah. And so there's a couple of these yeah. that the way I listen to podcasts, I don't know how you are, mm -hmm. um, but I don't listen to, I don't sit at my desk and listen to them. I'm much more, no. I'm on the treadmill kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I think everybody listens and kind of consumes them differently. So I want to get some of those in my rotation. Yeah. I don't, uh, I can't listen to that stuff while I'm trying to create or do yeah. some work. I, it just, it, uh, it doesn't work for me. All right. Good yeah. stuff. All right, Kirby. We've had a promo recall in the industry. I don't oh, know yeah. if you've seen this. I did see um, it. So Halo Branded Solutions and the Consumer Product Safety Commission issued a recall for promotional children's projector flashlights. Little mini flashlights, you shine them on a wall and they have like a character or whatever. That logo. Or whatever. Um, the issue is they could be disassembled and the batteries could be accessed. So it was a, a, a choking and an ingestion hazard. So about 84,000 of these were distributed at hospitals and healthcare facilities between February and June of this year as part of a Disney care package. Um, and because Halo is the importer of record, it is by law, their product. Okay. Mm, so okay. it's the, by, by law. So they were decorated with different Disney logos like Pixar and Star Wars and ESPN. And it was part of a kit that included some other promotional products. So um, I actually called my friend Terry McGuire about mm, this when I saw okay. the story. I've known Terry uh, 21 years and it was a really interesting conversation because I said, you know, this is a voluntary recall. How did it happen? And he told me, um, basically they have a plan in place and it was a fascinating conversation, but I'll, and I'll get to that in just a second. So they have a, a product, a recall protocol in place in case things like this have happened, mm. this happened. They've had it in place for years. They actually developed it sent it to the CPSC, the CPSC reviewed it, kicked it back to him, said, this is woefully inadequate. They redid it, okay. sent it back to the CPSC, and it was approved by the CPSC ombuds, uh, ombudsman. So uh, Halo was notified of a client concern, um, and they immediately implemented the voluntary recall in the steps outlined in their plan and coordinated with the CPSC. They set up a website for returns and refunds to make sure that people were aware wow. of it. This is how you bleeping handle a crisis. That's, I guess, my point with yeah. all of this. Um, and in talking with Terry, it was really fascinating just hearing the steps that they went through. They just wanted to have that in place. A, it's a great sales tool for larger clients that, mm. look, if something goes wrong, we have a plan in place to take care of it. Yeah. Right. We, we not only the obvious health risk to make sure you, you, you mitigate that, but you also mitigate any sort of damage from a press perspective or public relations perspective yeah. to the company. And I, I pushed it a little Terry a little bit. And I said, you know, how'd you come up with this? And he, great story. I'm not going to get into the deep part of it, but the, the real takeaway here is a, this is how you handle crisis and B this is what a great steward of the industry is. Mm -hmm. If you want to copy so you can implement this uh, recall yourself yeah. for a future, if there's a, a problem with anything you've sold, Mr. or Mrs. Distributor, Halo is happy to share that with you. Wow. Yeah. Um, hey. So you can, e you can email, I'll, I'll tell you real quick, and then I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, you, can yeah. email Terry, you can email Terry McGuire at Terry. Terry.mcguire, M-C-G-U-I-R-E, at halo.com. And he'll be happy to give you 
what they've already, you know, what is an approved CPSC uh, process for handling a crisis. And we talk so much in this, in our podcast, we've talked about it before. How do you don't handle a crisis? Yeah, this is yeah. ridiculous. And when, it, especially when it comes to product safety, which is a really important issue, right. we don't talk about enough as an industry and you see how it's done and done properly. Kudos to Halo, kudos yeah. to the entire team. I want your thoughts, Kirby. So I'm really glad you brought it up. It's funny. I'd seen the headline and I was like, ah, I didn't know whether I wanted to bring it up. And, and I think the, the thing that you did really well is get, reaching out to Terry and getting a little yeah. bit of inside baseball, which is, um, you know, adds a lot of layers to it. But to be totally honest with you, and, and I'll just give you my, you know, yeah. the first thing that went through my mind is I read it and I was like, oh, it's a good thing it's Halo. Not because I wish that negativity upon Halo, but I'm like, oh, Halo, handle Halo will handle it well. Yeah. Um, I, and again, for those who don't know, both uh, Bill and I worked for Halo essentially for uh, years. And, you know, I left there on great terms. And Terry was one of the people who you just always looked at and gone and thought, okay, if, what does he think? Because if he thinks yeah. something that I'm going to give it further thought. So the idea that they would have a plan in place is not surprising to me. No. And, and it's encouraging that my my, my, the first thing that went through my mind was right. So I'm so kudos to them. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You and I did work there. You absolutely left on good terms. I left on terms. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> no, I left on good terms. Let's call it good terms. No, I didn't yeah. leave on good terms, but, um, it was just a really interesting conversation. And I love the fact you talk about strategic foresight. You talk about solving problems that don't exist before they become a problem. Yeah. This is really where, um, you look at a company the size of Halo, knowing the resources they have, knowing the, the human capital they have, and the absolute brilliant, smart people there that think about these things, and the transparency. Again, yeah. this is a big, this could be a big problem. This could yeah. have been a real problem. Only two people, there were only two reported cases, yeah. and they voluntarily pulled the plug on 84,000 of these things. Yeah, which is a big that, investment. Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge investment. And so, um, again, kudos to them. If you want a copy of that, at uh, plan email Terry McGuire, terry.mcguire at halo.com um, and tell them that uh, you heard it from Bill and Kirby that you can get a free plan. <laughs> All right. But anyway, kudos, kudos yeah. to everybody at Halo. That's great yeah. stuff. All right, Kirby, got another topic for us? I do. Hundreds laid off over a Zoom call. I have it on my list. Yes. <laughs> so uh, for those who don't know, uh, digital mortgage, mortgage startup better.com invited set 900 employees to a short Zoom call last week to inform yep. them that they were all being laid off just before the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, they announced layoffs citing market efficiency, performance, productivity, and accused the some of the accused the staff of stealing uh, yep. because they weren't they were unproductive. Um, so I, you know, I think that better.com has been uh, kind of lambasted over uh, social media and the media for laying off 900 employees over a Zoom call. Um, I have opinions on this, but I, I would love to, especially since you have it on your list, I'd love to hear yours. I do. So I'm going to add a little color and then I'll, I'll add my yep. opinion. So one of the, 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 basically what the CEO said, and his name is uh, Vishal Garg. And what's interesting is, Kirby, I actually wrote this on my list last Thursday when I first saw the news broke. So I've mm -hmm. been sitting on this since we recorded mm -hmm. the last podcast. Yep. He said on the call, if you quote, if you're on this call, you are part of an unlucky group that is being laid off. Your employment here is terminated effective immediately. They were told they'd get emails from HR, but no one could get them because all of their access was immediately terminated. So they had to get them on personal emails and things like that. Here's the problem, a real problem I have. Okay. And I know I, I have, I don't think we're going to be misaligned here. We'll see. And I didn't realize this was going to be a Halo centric podcast, but it's okay. about to be. Okay. When I was at Halo um, and I lived in the Northeast and we were going through the preliminary stages of the, the bankruptcy back in the early 2000s, one of the jobs I had to do was go close offices and essentially mm -hmm. lay off 30. 40 and sometimes 50 people at a time. Not an easy job no, at true. all. It was, it was, I, I still, it kind of makes my stomach churn when I had to do that. But I was sent there to do it in person. And I was sent there to have individual conversations with everybody. None, none of this was their fault. This was right. fault of previous management, just like a lot of this. These are market conditions, not the fault of a lot of these employees over at better.com. Sure. Yep. 
you have to, I know we have the movie up in the air and I know, you know, we can relate it to technology in, in I'm not saying don't do it over technology. Mm-hmm. I don't, that, that's not the issue that it was done over zoom. I think when you do any sort of layoff and it's done in a mass way like that without humanity, that there was no humanity in this. There was sure. no, I'm sorry, all of you are let go. We have a schedule. We've emailed you the schedule. We are going to have to unfortunately terminate your access to emails within the next 10 minutes, but please find that, forward it to your personal email, make your appointment with HR to go over. But there's ways to do it using technology that still has a semblance of humanity in it. You're taking somebody's livelihood right before the holidays, mind you, and you're, you're changing their lives. Mm-hmm. And so I, the, the lack of humanity is astounding to me. I didn't love sitting in front of people and explaining to all of them in, as a group and then individually why they're being laid off through no fault of their own. Um, but it had to be done and it had to be done with humanity. And so when I saw this, it made my blood boil. I'll be honest with you. Um. So it's interesting, I, and I, I really appreciate your sort of passion and perspective on this. Um, and I think you're right about the idea that that when something like this happens, that to remember humanity. And I think a big piece of it's like the 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 you know the idea that they cut off email despite yeah like that's clearly poorly handled. That being said, that sort of thing I've watched that happen face to face. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Like I've seen people mm-hmm. be shitty and lack humanity, whether it was no face to face or over Zoom. What I would say is you get what you get. I mean, we're talking about all this stuff with with the value of technology. And to a degree, much of this has skewed in the favor of uh, employees. Hey, you get to work from home. You have more flexibility. You have this. You don't have to come in. You don't have to. Uh, uh, but then when you got to do 900, <laughs> you have a conversation with 900 people. Mm-hmm. This is the world we're living in. To me, because he's with lamb, he was lambasted in all the headlines. They were laid off over a Zoom call. They were laid off over yeah. a Zoom call. Well, but here's the thing: that's that, like if you can do all your work over a Zoom call, like how can we bitch at the the management for using the same technology that you want to use so that you can work from home? And so, could it have been done with more humanity? Of course, but I've seen people be shitty face to face. To me, this I I, I think we are. We are picking and choosing our battles with technology on on something like this. Yeah, I'm going to push back. Um, okay. Here's, I, I have no problem with using the technology, especially with a, a sale of. Uh, I assume I, I don't know, but I'm assuming uh, it's a workforce that's scattered about the United States right. or scattered about a large area. So I. I understand using the technology. I think it's appropriate to use the technology. Mm-hmm. But from all reports, so the lead, I agree, the headlines clickbait. Right. This is not a Zoom issue. It's how Zoom was applied. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't, you know, when you read the thing, it was a three minute long meeting from, from all accounts. Right. It, the way he approached it was your, your fire, you know, your, your employment ends uh, effective immediately. There was no compassion. There was no sympathy. There was no empathy. Sure. That's what I'm having the issue with. I couldn't yep. give a shit if you're, you're right. People are crappy in person too, mm-hmm. but I think you would also agree. It's a lot harder to be crappy in person than it is over uh, a video screen. So yeah. I, I think to a degree, really but talk- yeah, I've, I've seen it happen though. So it's one of those where I, 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 I get what you're saying, but I think in those moments, I actually find sometimes people are more shitty in those situations because they want to rip the bandaid off and they want, like, I'm sure you handled it with a plum, but I think that there is, the, the, sometimes it's just like, well, let's just get it over with. We're not going to. And so I, to me, the technology wasn't the issue. If you want to no, like, the te- they didn't handle it well, great. But the technology, it, that's how we get no. to 900 people. Well, the technology is why we're all talking about it. Yeah. So honestly, I, again, I have, I want to be very clear here. You have to leverage, you know, it cuts both ways. Yes, Technology exactly. Cuts both I, ways. I got no sort problem of my with that. I think the real issue here is it just makes for a good story. That's why we're all know, here about it. I'm sure yeah. these things have happened elsewhere. Yeah. People call 900 people in a, in a large <laughs> room, yep. in a large building and say, hey, but usually, usually 
They have human resources people yeah. right there. You have a set schedule of meetings. So to me, this is not about the technology at all. Okay. It's about the absolute sheer lack of humanity. And I won't back down on that much. Like so, that. So, so that part, I, I, we, I think we're coming yeah. to a consensus on this, but I think it was the use of technology that was the headline, right? And so that's well, that the was part. dumb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just okay. clickbait. Yeah. That's, what's, that's what got, look, there are mass hirings also on Zoom. There are all <laughs> sorts of good things that happen on Zoom. It has nothing to do with Zoom, but the media is very good at manipulating all of us to clicking on things, right? I think we all agree on it. All right. Promo burnout, Kirby. It's a thing. Uh, okay. A lot of people are burning out on promo. I don't have a funny one to do today. I wish That's I right. did. That's I feel right. like I need a palate cleanser. Um, so it's really four things. Everybody's feeling overworked. I, I know I have. I think you and your team have from time to time. So it's really four things. Uh, pricing, everything is more expensive. We know that. Inventory, yep. there's nothing in stock. What's the most popular promotion product? What's in stock? Yep. Uh, number three is shipping. Estimates are uh, unreliable and delays as we know, mm -hmm. super common. And then the labor yep. uh, okay. suppliers are short staffed, overworked. And those and, are the four I would come up with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And most <laughs> distributors in our industry are one to two people operations. So you wear every hat. You're the president, you're the CEO, you're the staff accountant, you're the marketing guy, yeah. you're the sales gal, and you're also the chief trash officer, right? Yeah. So you, it, that's generally our thing. And I think the great resignations really contributed to this quite a bit um, mm -hmm. as people, you know, are, have not rushed to go back to work after people yeah. downsized during the initial stages of the pandemic. Um, so it's this weird continual loop with no clear solutions. And I, I'm still seeing so much on the promotional products Facebook page about people complaining about um, suppliers and they're not getting back to me and all that. And I thought maybe it's time we come up with a couple solutions for people instead of just complaining and bitching about things. Maybe we have some solutions. So I have a couple, but if you'd like to go first or I, I can throw out mine, it's up to you. Why don't you go ahead just because I have okay. some thoughts, uh, but, but okay. I want to know kind of where you're headed on this. Okay. So remember, you know, it, it, the frustrating thing is there's no like obvious clear yeah. resolve there's no this, red button. right yeah yeah every order requires more attention so yep. distributors make more calls yep. so st suppliers struggle to handle the increased call volume yep right? that's true and then distributors distributors get frustrated because they can't get answers yep. and mistakes get made and they turn to social media to roast suppliers so here are the four four ways to help uh Tories to help and these are really focused on distributors what you can do mr and mrs distributor okay Number one, build more time into each order. Yes. I mean, if, if you think it's going to take two weeks, double it. Think about a family vacation. It takes twice as long to get there and always costs twice as much. Okay. Number yes. one. Number two, include more detail in your communications and send complete orders to cut down on those mm. phone calls and emails. Yeah. I think that's, and I, this is not coming from a supplier, but my guess is they are inundated with incomplete orders. Yeah. I, yeah. I guarantee you they are. Now, if it goes through a larger company, um, they probably have a process, but a lot of smaller companies, they still send orders. I mean, if you've ever been at a supplier factory and seen how many ways they take an order, yeah. this is why promo standards is so damn important, by the way, right. that's yeah. a topic for another day. Um, uh, so that's number two. Three, educate your customers. It's time for brutal honesty. Kirby and I have been pounding this for a year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lord, yeah. Number one, if you don't think you can do it, say no. Do yeah. yourself and do your customer a favor because you're not building a relationship. But, you know, be, be, be brutal in your honesty. And number three, or number four, I'm sorry, leverage your personal relationships instead yeah. of grabbing on to a supplier you've never heard of that yeah. claims they have stock. Because this is this is happening. Work with suppliers where you have a personal relationship with. Yeah. That's where you make the phone calls and you call the VP of sales or you call the person you have a, a, a connection with. If you don't have a connection with a supplier, you're using them for the first time and they seem to have stock on a product that nobody else does, you are absolutely playing with fire. Yeah. So those are my four, Kirby. Those are my four ways distributors can help themselves immediately. Yeah. I, I And I think, okay, so, uh, and we're, we're not getting it perfect. Um, no. And we're, we're, we're definitely um, struggling like many others. I mean, uh, you know, 15 minutes before we started this, uh, M was in my office talking about an, a, mm -hmm. a, rep, a reputable supplier who's struggling yeah. to deliver on something that in sure. a normal year they would deliver on with their right. eyes closed. Right. And so, right. but 
because not a we, normal year. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely not a normal year. I, it's one of the jokes I've said is I feel really bad for Skylar because she started mm-hmm. June first of this year. I mean, like yeah. I keep telling her, honey, it's going to get better. This is not how it always is. Right. Yeah. The, the good news is if you survive and thrive here, yes, all downhill. Yeah. All downhill. so so I, I, I you have said this, so I think I'm going to be a little bit redundant, but yeah. I think over communicate, over communicate, over communicate. Yeah. That's something we've been peach, preaching. Um, if uh, and and. If you have been telling people mm-hmm. from like, I think I wrote my first blog about this in April, then I got really serious about it in July. And mm-hmm. so even though my clients are frustrated, I've been talking to them about it, that it's going right. to be a challenge forever. And at this point, my clients are like, yeah, I should have yeah. ordered earlier because you told me, right? Yeah. Um, so over communicate though, in the sense that, so what happens a lot of On times- On the front end. Yeah, well, also during- and but what I mean by this is, so a lot of times what will happen is I'll get an email. Hey, where are we with this? And I'll mm-hmm. be like, immediately forward that or get with a supplier and blah, blah, blah. And then I go back and forth with the supplier for three days, yeah. but I've not replied to the customer. And so yeah. the customer has no, you know, like constantly be like, Hey, here's the yeah. latest I'm hearing about this order. And I found that has mitigated some of it. Like, even it's like, Hey, we're not hitting that date. No. It's not happening, but here's where we're going to be. And wildly over communicating that more than ever um, yeah. is one of the biggest ones I've seen. And then you mentioned it with working with suppliers you already have work with those folks to proactively market the things they actually have. Yes. I've actually had pretty good luck with uh, when, I mean, literally because I've been talking about so long, like someone will say, Hey, I need such and such. And I'll just chuckle. Um, No, we can't do that. But what I can do is I can send you the links of the deep inventory from, you know, Sam Mars, Starline or whoever and say, because they have got that all set up, choose from that, choose from that. And then we'll go. And you're still not guaranteed. But, but your right. best chance of success. And so those are my big two right now is just yeah. wildly over communicate and pick from the, the, the trusted suppliers with the things they tell you they have right now. Right. You are, we are not in a position as a distributor, you know, and, and I'm not a distributor any longer, but I was the, the long one for a long time. And I understand it because I still have customer relationships yeah. too. You're not in a position where you can over communicate. You cannot over communicate. Yeah. And so remember, remember when clients send you an order distributor, Mr. or Mrs. Distributor, it goes into a black hole until yeah. you let them know what's going on. Yeah. And again, you're doing yourself and your clients no favors by sugarcoating a problem. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the other thing, and we're going long and so I apologize, but no, the thing, that, the good. advantage you have right now as a distributor is that no yeah. one else can get it either. So yep. you, you have the ability to be honest, not a jerk, but just like, you can feel good about saying, no, that particular t-shirt doesn't come in black. It's not in the, the world. <laughs> you well, know? And, and, and when the wheels are greased of the supply, supply chain again, people will remember who was honest with them and who yes. wasn't. Yes. Period. All Agreed. right, Kirby, that we've beaten that dead horse. Good topics today. All right. Yeah. So it is holiday time. This is the party in the back. That's why we're the mold of all podcasts. So we're going to play a little game with Kirby, have a little fun. So Kirby, you like holiday movies, I believe. I want to ask you mm-hmm. which holiday movie character is most like you okay. and why. So Ooh, I'm going to okay. give you either or. You just pick. Quick explanation. We move right on. Okay. I'll do my so, best. George Bailey from It's a Wonderful Life, Jimmy Stewart's character. Okay. Or Buddy the Elf from Elf, which is more <laughs> like Kirby. I think that most people, uh, I think people think I'm wildly overly positive. So maybe they'd mm-hmm. say Buddy, Buddy the Elf. I think it's more, uh, Miss Bailey, I, I think we all struggle through yeah. uh, challenging times in our lives. But when we are most happy is when we have perspective and gratitude. And so that Good. would be... Good answer. Okay. Jack Skellington from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas or Charlie Brown from A Charlie Brown Christmas? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go Charlie Brown. I, I, and okay. I think, I don't know that there's a great answer. I just, I, I like that movie better. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yukon Cornelius from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. If you remember, he is the peppermint miner, which is why he's always licking his pickaxe to see if he struck peppermint. Okay. Um, or Frosty from Frosty the Snowman. Yeah, I think Frosty. Uh, Again, I think that, uh, and the only the reason I just say that is just like, I think that he was one of those guys that brought the party with him wherever he went. And so Mm -hmm. I I aspire to be Frosty. 
Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. The Grinch from How the Grinch Stole Christmas <laughs> or Walter. That would be Buddy the Elf's dad. Oh, man. Uh, the two grumpy ones. Um, yeah, I, I, I never. Walter was kind of. The Grinch, I almost celebrate the negativity. So I'm going to go with okay. the Grinch. Uh, obviously, right. hopefully the, the, he got a little more positive toward the end. But I don't know. The dad and yeah, buddy that's the a tough I one. wanted to punch. <laughs> that was pur- purposely a tough one. All right. Yeah. Scott Calvin from the Santa Claus, Tim Ooh, Allen's character. Yeah. Or Stern. That's the conductor from the Polar Express. Oh, I'm going to go uh, the Santa Claus. Uh, Tim okay. Allen's character. I, I, a right. marketing marketing guy who... Uh, you know, I, I I just thought those were those were actually surprisingly funny fun movies. I, I did not yeah. expect to like them, and I really did. Yeah. So I'm gonna go very ahead. good movies, absolutely. All right, Ebenezer Scrooge from A Christmas Carol, or mm-hmm. Frank Cross. Uh, that's Bill Murray's character from Scrooge. <laughs> I know you say this movie didn't hold up. I literally watched it again the other night. I love mm-hmm. the movie Scrooge. Um, I still love it. I just watched it again. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go Frank Cross. I, you know, entrepreneur. Hopefully I don't have quite the staple, the staple, the antlers on the, on the squirrel or whatever. To be clear, the actual movie does hold up. The uh, apparel in that movie does not hold up the, the, the outfits. It it does reek of the eighties, but that's okay. It's a good movie. Uh, Kevin McAllister from home alone or Ralphie Parker from a Christmas story. So here I'll, I'll do the unpopular opinion of the day. I think the Christmas story is the most overrated movie ever. I, I do not like that movie. I'm gonna go home alone because you you come in my house, you're gonna have a bunch of shit waiting from you. I like the Christmas stories just never resonated with me. So it's it's fine, but it's it like people like lose their mind over that. I, I, I just never liked it. It is one of the greatest Christmas movie, <laughs> if not the greatest Christmas movie of all time Absolutely all right not. kirby let's move on let's move on i, I can't <laughs> handle that uh clark griswold from christmas vacation yeah. or yeah. cousin eddie from christmas vacation <laughs> um you know I, I there's there's a one i don't know if i've ever told you the story but there's a, there's a vacation moment where i had a mm-hmm. I, I joked that it was a clark griswold moment uh, so mm-hmm. I think, you know, I would definitely say Clark, by the way. Um, okay. but, but like where you, you go into a vacation, everything's going wrong and then you flip out and, and like, like, I'll tell you that story another day, but yeah, definitely. Clark. That. Yeah. Okay. Definitely Clark. All right. Two more. We're doing great. John McClane from Die Hard or John McClane from Die Hard two die hard for sure okay. uh so uh, die hard two if you want to have the argument that that's not a christmas movie that's fine die hard is definitely a christmas movie i just watched it the other night and it, it became the christmas season um and so i a i that's one of that's the best christmas movie and i, I, I go ahead no go ahead. no and no. uh no and i love i actually love that that character um obviously he was especially at that point that was before he became the John McClane of 15 other movies. And like he was sort of an everyman and he was trying yeah. to make his, his marriage work. And so I, I love that movie. I, I've given it, I, I now uh, turned around. I agree that, uh, uh, that uh, Die Hard is a Christmas movie and that Christmas really doesn't be in until Hans Gruber falls off of Nakatomi, Nakatomi. Plaza. Yes. But I will say that Die Hard 2 is also a Christmas movie. It, it, it is. It's just, I, the problem is it's just not as good a movie right? It's just not as, it's not as good. Okay. I mean, there's major right. plot holes in that one. Because there's no plot holes in the first Die Hard. That's Got right. That's um, so last one, Kirby, Hans Gruber from Die Hard <laughs> mm. or Colonel Stewart from Die Hard 2. Yeah. I, again, I, uh, yeah, I mean, Colonel Stewart was a, a very impressive character, but Hans Gruber was awesome, man. He, like, right. he was the ultimate entrepreneur. Well, yippee ki yay, <laughs> mother trucker. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right, so that will end the Promo Front Podcast. But before we say goodbye, don't don't turn off those little dials just yet. Let's thank our pals over at Promo Pulse. Remember, they do have that great AMP service, both emails and now social. It is one of those ways to keep continually in front of your clients, beautifully uh, created and curated content that will keep your brand in front of your customers not just during the holidays, but year round. And right now, your first 30 days are free. There's no better gift to yourself or your business than to head over to promopulse.io backslash amp and uh, go ahead and register for that service. And you won't be sorry you did. You will not. All right, Kirby, have a great day. Always good to podcast with you. See you, man. Christmas Story is a great movie. (laughs) It's terrible.